Hey, Dawn, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have you back. I mean, we did our pre-show where you and I got ourselves warmed up on this topic and boy, time flies. I'm expecting a visit from your cat. Last time you and I spoke, your cat jumped up on the keyboard and did all sorts of funky stuff. Uh, we've got him sequestered out of the room, but I have two other ones in here, but I don't, I don't think they're going to show up. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Don, thank you for joining me on the Profit Tool Belt podcast. As you know, but I'll repeat it. This is, um, this is a group of business owners who happen to be in construction and contracting. And we're all here to learn how to make our businesses better and to really serve our clients better. So who's Don and why would you be here talking to us? Well, um, I have over 25 years of experience working in the construction industry, uh, various positions uh, from project assistant, project administration, some project management, um, accounting, um, in all forms, um, and then have, you know, work usually with smaller companies, with smaller mm. teams, and so uh, you tend to get a chance to do things that aren't necessarily in your job description. And so I've, uh, you know, assisted with bidding and sending projects out to bid uh, for large projects, um, you know, qualifying bidders, just yeah. all aspects of, uh, the, of a construction company, uh, mostly in the commercial sector, um, oh, okay. some residential, um, but mostly commercial general contractors and um, a couple subcontractor companies as well. Mm. So tenant and improvement so, stuff or like new build? Um, it would run the gamut. Um, you know, the last general contractor I worked for would do anything from fixing a door to building a whole new office complex. So it, it um, was a lot of things in between. Um, okay. And uh, a couple of years ago, I started officially uh, a career writing uh, into the construction industry, um, mostly focusing on what we call content, content marketing in the industry, mm -hmm. which is articles, uh, white papers, ebooks. Um, yeah. So uh, anything that a company would publish to get information to their potential customers to help educate them um, and to be seen as an expert in the mm -hmm. industry. Do you mean that it's not enough to just put up your website and hope that people come to it and call your phone number and beg you to do work? Not these days. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and the days of, you know, just repeatedly saying keywords on, on the page aren't, aren't good either. So um, the things that Google and the other uh, search engines are looking for are really good content, um, that's valuable, um, you know, they're tracking mm. and paying attention to how users engage with your website. And so um, you need to make sure that um, what you got there is, is serving your, your potential customers and is answering their questions so that yeah. uh, you'll continue to rank higher. It's, it's so interesting because in the early days of the internet, just having a web page was enough and then you had to have the right speed and then the right images. And now... It's more complicated than working on your car. I mean, years ago, you could change your own oil. Now, you don't even have the right tool to open up the cowling under your hood to change your own oil. And it just gets more and more complex. And it's really the same thing with this whole World Wide Web. There is a specialty under every nook and cranny. And the most basic one is this writing properly for your clients. And actually, in... for, uh, you know, for someone like me, it has gotten, I would say it's gotten easier and better for us, um, you know, for those of us freelance writers and whatnot, because the best thing that you can do now is to provide just good content. You know, uh, it's not as Trickery. important keywords yeah. and meta descriptions and all that. other. You don't stuff. need those tricks anymore. No, you, you, if, as long as you're providing quality content that answers questions that your potential clients might have you know that's what the the algorithm is able to figure out you know yeah. that's what that's what google's really looking for this goes back to I'm, I'm so glad you're on the show with us thank you for joining us because i'm always talking about who's your perfect client and are you going after them because people listening might say dom you don't understand my clients are different they're the worst they pay slow 
They're super demanding. They always want us to do extra stuff and they don't want to pay for it. Uh, they're asking us to do work that nobody else uh, wants to do, but we're already on site. So we feel forced to do it for this poor old lady or couple. And the reason is not the customer, it's the contractor. They haven't gone to get the right client. And that ultimately is in our control. And that's really where you and I guess people like you fit in because, well, actually, this is the topic of today, how to get great clients to love you and call you. That's the dream. Dawn, it's the dream we all have. Mm -hmm. We want the customers to come to us. We don't want to have to advertise or do anything. We just want that phone to be constantly ringing. And I totally understand that. Yes. Yeah. So then let me put that as our question date, Dawn. How do we get great clients or customers to love us and call us? Well, if, uh, you know, if you're starting out and don't have a website, um, that would probably be one of the first steps. Um, these days, everything is digital. You know, hardly anyone goes to the phone book to find a contractor anymore. They're, they're looking online. And so mm. you need to make sure that you have an online presence. And, you know, that starts with your website. Um, will include things like different social media sites um you know and you need to know that you um as you mentioned where what is your client is your client where do they hang out what social media sites do they look yeah. at um you know and it's shown that you know if you're looking like commercial construction you know you're probably going to be better targeting linkedin and twitter um, if you're looking for residential construction, you're probably better to be on Facebook and possibly mm. Instagram. Um, and so, you know, you, it's it's looking to see where your customers are, where they're hanging out, yeah. and then getting yourself into that space. Can I can I ask you a question on that? Because you just it's a, it's something I keep seeing, and I'm I don't actually know the answer, but I see some people who don't even have a website; they just have a pretty good Facebook or Instagram page. Is that enough or do I need, you know, let's say two of them. I need the website and something else or can I just be Facebook, Instagram or just LinkedIn? Well, I will tell you that um, Google, one of the main Google mm. measures is um, what they call, uh, you know, site domain authority or site authority. Mm. And that has to do with um, how, how much of an expert you are, you know, and kind of your presence online. And right. so when it comes to that, having more sites that you are located in and having them linked together, you know, with web page links or, you know, this, that, and the other, um, that improves and grows your digital footprint, which mm. is part of site or domain authority. And so it, the more, uh, uh, individual sites and pieces that you can have for your company, the more of an authority you're seen as, which means you're going to rate higher in the search yeah. engine results. Yeah. I and think so also in that case, it can benefit from having multiple presences. Yeah. Even if they don't have to be complicated, but just multiple presences, because if I hire, if I go to hire somebody to fix my fence, let's just say, and they only show up in one place, an Instagram page, fenceswefix.com or something like that, then I'm going to think of them as a small contractor and that's all they do. But if I go and they, oh, I see they do fences and they do decks and outdoor living spaces. And let's just say in that category, and here's their website, here's their Instagram, here's their Facebook and a LinkedIn page. I'll think, oh, okay, they're a serious player. I'm also going to align my expectations of them as to, can they work on my style of house? And I'm now, if you probably saw in my head, I'm like a, a more affluent buyer, but that's what we want. We want to do less jobs for more money and, and reasonable profits so that we don't have to work our fingers to the bone. Right. Well, and you want, like you said, you want to attract the right client. So if your mm. company is not small and, you know, is looking for a more affluent client, then you need to portray that image. And so the more of a presence you have, that's the type of image that you will portray to your potential clients. Yeah. So what do we, where do we start? Because it's hard to write. I mean, people aren't born as writers. It's a tough skill. It, it is. And, um, <laughs> I say that to somebody who does it every day. Uh, but, it, it, you know, how many things can I write about? How often do I need to post? How, I guess we'll go back to the question. How do I get the client? What do we need to do here to, to fix this, to turn this ship around? 
Well, um, you know, I think the first thing is that you have to realize where your strengths are. And um, I will say in my personal experience, this is just my personal experience, uh, you know, contractors may not be the right person to be writing. So, <laughs> you can say uh, it. You Do know, you think contractors like... aren't great communicators? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Some, sometimes they're challenged. <laughs> um, okay. You know, so I think, I think that's the first step. And you have to realize that, I mean, this is an investment in the future of your business. And mm. so, you know, if you want to portray a professional expert, you know, port, portfolio, that's what you, what the image you want to have out there, then you've got to invest to have good writing that will uh, portray what you want it to say and and reach your potential clients, you know, use their language, that type of stuff. And so, um, I think I think the first thing is, you know, you need to you need to see if that's really something you can handle, or if it might be best to hire a professional. Um, and you know, a lot of times these days, I mean, you can go to one one place you know you can there are uh, media companies and such like that that will help you design a website you know and they've got writers on their staff and that whatnot that can help to craft both the words and the uh, appearance of your site uh, and then i would just caution that you know look for companies that have experience doing construction companies because yeah it is a different industry there's it's a different, different language terminology. yeah there's different terminology there's a whole you know construction touches almost every industry just by nature of it but you know it is you need to have someone who's got that experience yeah do you um because you can't have every kind of experience. I mean, yourself, Don, as a writer, and you've been doing this a long time, but you can't have HVAC experience. And then you can't have HVAC experience in a cold environment, let's say in, in Boston, and HVAC experience in Nevada. It's different experience. So what do you do to get you know, the owner's thoughts out of their head and onto paper for them? What's your process for that? Uh, most of the time, usually um, in an interview, just like this, you know, I just oh. be asking them, excuse me, questions about, you know, what are the challenges of being an HVAC contractor in a cold environment, you know, or, yeah. um, or what, uh, what's their, what's their perfect client and, and what, um, what problems did they see the most, you know, those type of things so that we can uh, target, you know, what type of questions and things that people might be searching for if they um, were looking for an HVAC contractor. Right. So you help them put together, what What do you do? Like you say, okay, you need two articles a week, two articles a day, two a year. Like how many, what's the number? The, there is no magic number. I wish there oh. was. I mean, um, I, you know, it kind of depends on, you know, budget's going to be a big consideration um, because, you know, my time costs money as a writer. And so, uh, you know, and then how much, just how much, how active they want to be, you know, maybe in ramping up, they're producing a lot of content to just kind of get a baseline started. Right. And then, you know, I think most, uh, you know, most recommendations are, you know, at least weekly, you're publishing something, you know, an article or whatever. And then, you know, social media, there's all kinds of statistics about how often you should be posting that. And, um, you know, it, I just, again, it just depends on the size of your team and what you can do. I yeah. mean, some, some contractors can post every day. Some, you know, might struggle to post once a week. Um, if you're just getting started, I would just start with as much as you can and then, um, you know, see how things go. Are people still reading blogs? Is that when you're talking about posting, do you mean posting to a blog or posting Usually, to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram? You know, are you writing the articles? I would, I would say I use the term blog more as like a structural definition on a website because that's how it is set up on somebody's website as, as a blog. Um, but usually, you know, the articles can be about all kinds of different things. And, um, you know, mainly that's my bread and butter. That's what I usually focus on or, you know, regularly oh. occurring content articles that try to educate clients. Mm. Um, and then... Uh, 
and then the social media are uh, social media posts or things like that would be separate. Yeah, it's it's you know the the key and it's the same for doctors and dentists and lawyers and engineers and contractors. We are good at what we do. It doesn't mean we have to be good at writing. And then I could see myself getting stuck. I mean, maybe I could come up with four things to say, but that's, let's just say that takes me four weeks to say it. Actually, it doesn't because to write one good article takes a long time. <laughs> can, yes. But but imagine that, you know, after four weeks, I stop. What What's the impact on my site if I write a little bit and then don't come back to it for a couple of months? Well, think about what, you know, how you would react if you went to a website, saw a flurry of activity, and then, you know, like a year ago, they just kind of dropped off the, you know, stopped writing. You would kind of think, hmm, what's going oh, on? Maybe yeah, it's yeah. not so important that they're educating their clients. And I think, I think that can be the greatest struggle for companies is, you know, to come up with continuing uh, content that's yeah. fresh and new and, you know, maintaining that uh, kind of that post that schedule. And I think that's why, you know, you need to make it realistic. And it's like, you know, maybe you can only do two articles a month and, and that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's just whatever is going to work for you. And then, uh, you know, that's why having great ideas, like, you know, doing case studies. So these are, you know, interviews oh. with your past clients to find out what their experience was like and, you know, photos and projects, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's a plethora of stuff that you can use for content ideas, not just, yeah. you know, how, how you do different projects. It's interesting. I don't know if you saw me smiling there when you said case studies, but that just occurred to me. If you're selling to professionals, you know, the two income family where, you know, the, they're both professionals they're used to seeing case studies all day at work. And so if you suddenly come up with a case study, let's say I come up with a case study on my website for a re-roofing case study or a renovations case study, that's gonna seem very natural to me to read that. And it'll it needs to follow a certain format, you know, as they do. And that's a good idea because I wanna line myself up with that perfect customer. Exactly, and you know, nobody's gonna say it's much better for somebody to hear something positive about your company from somebody else than from you. I mean, they're going to believe this third party more yeah. than they are, you know, you're just your sales copy saying we're great. So, yeah. um, you know, anytime that you can use your customer's words, uh, is, is good. That's good copy. I mean, that's testimonials, case studies, those kind of things. Um, how do you do that though? How do you go back to old customers and get a case study? Cause it's hard enough getting pictures of a job site after we're done. And by the way, while we're doing the work, sometimes it doesn't look so pretty. We have to make a mess before we make it pretty a lot of times. Yes. Right. Um, I think that, you know, focusing on making sure that you're always getting before and after photos for as many of your projects as you can get is key um, mm. for any kind of marketing. Um, you, you want to have that. I mean, those pictures are a thousand words and, you know, nothing says, says that shows that better than a before and an after comparison shot. Um, and then, you know, I think you just, you have to ask, I mean, um, you know, the, the good thing is, you know, a short conversation, 10, 15 minutes, you know, could, is it long enough to get a case study because you're, you're going to provide the writer with the information about the project and you're going to have challenges and all that background information from your company. Yeah. Really, you're only asking for the client to maybe hop on a 10 to 15 minute call and then, you know, and to have their name attached to it if that's what they're going to do. But is um, that, is that something that you would do? Like, do you get on the yep. phone on behalf of a cabinet maker or a roofer or a concrete placer and say, oh, you do? Yeah, you're nodding. Yep. Yep. For people who aren't listening, who for people who are watching this as an audio, let me do this right. <laughs> Some people are listening to this as an audio. Other people are watching this as a video, but Dawn's nodding her head. And yep, yep. Yeah. I guess you have to, right? You have to get the whole story because you're going to hear, I'm just going to say, oh, yeah, I had these clients, Fred and Julie and blah, blah, blah. But you need a little more substance than that, right? You need to hear them definitely say because there's there's going to be their side of the story what were their challenges <laughs> and their you know feelings about how this was a, how this was accomplished yeah so, now you definitely. mentioned that you do ebooks as well yes okay uh, this is a i know i think i know the answer but i'm going to pose this as a disbelief question don 
Why would a contractor need an ebook? Well, they're great for uh, <laughs> for marketing, of course. <laughs> um, you know, and I I think it kind of depends on again on who your audience is. Sure. Um, you know, if um, but just even. Because I would tend to think of that more as a commercial contractor. They could put together oh. some sort of ebook on highlighting their projects or whatever else. But residential uh, contractors could do that as well. You know, maybe it's an ebook about kitchen design trends for the next year, you know, right. and they've got a combination of photos and descriptions of of what those different types of design trends are. And what that allows you to do is you offer that on your website in exchange for their email address. And then you've got a way to reach out to potential clients directly. And they've given you permission to contact because, them. So right. you're, you're not in violation of any spam laws. And so then you can reach out to them and you can you know proactively market your services. Right. So you would write an ebook that says, it doesn't matter where I live, mountainside, mountain view, mountain hill, mountain meadow, community, uh, how custom kitchens are built in mountainside, or uh, the top trends in home renovations in mountainside. And then that just comes together as an ebook, right? Yep. Or I guess six things to do to beautify your house. Something that the ideal client wants to see yes. and that they're going to download. Okay. And these days, I mean, it's so easy because those can be put together, you know, in Word, Publisher, you know, Adobe products, whatever. You set them up as a PDF document and, you know, you don't have to officially publish them. They can cost you almost nothing except the writing and the, the production yeah. time. But um, uh, Don, I think it's nice that you said those are easy to do. <laughs> I, I look at masonry and what you know what a mason says oh, i'll just put the lintel in here and I, i'm like i have no idea it looks easy to them but not easy to me right it's just that's your every day yes exactly um what's the quickest not, I, I don't want to do that that kind of cheapens the question but if i was both so, going to have the most impactful writing on my website where should i start Uh, well, you got to start with your homepage. I mean, that's your main website page. Um, you know, um, you want to talk about the work that you do, uh, you know, what your ideal customers, what their struggles are, um, and how your company can, can alleviate those. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, describe your services, your service areas, those kind of things. Those are the kind of things that will be important for search engine um, recognition. And so um, I think that is because um, even if you just have one page and that's all it is, is a description of your company and your services and yeah. who your clients are, that that's a start, you know, and then you can add on, you know, projects, pictures and those kind of things that people are looking for when they're when they're trying to review a contractor. Yeah, as you go. And it, it's so important. People need trust. And now more than ever, we need trust. You know, we've just gone through a global pandemic that put trust front and center. Uh, the way things are now, people need to trust contractors because as we know, you have to call three, hoping one will show up. Exactly. And then that poor one that shows up, everybody acts like I'm getting a ton of quotes. They're not. You're the that, that contractor was the only one that showed up. So there's trust on the contractor's side. There's trust on the homeowner. You know, on the commercial side, it's a little different because they're usually dealing with the same 10 or 12 subs that they always use. But that that trust still needs to be there so that we present ourselves the way we want our company represented. Yes. Yeah. Well, Don, thank you. It's been great. If somebody wants to find out more about getting articles written or your experience in writing for construction specifically, how would we find you in this big wide world? Well, um, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. It's uh, got a profile there. And then also my website is just uh, D Kello. So D K I L L O U G H writer.com. Right. So D Kello writer.com. And on LinkedIn, your full name's Dawn Kello. And so it's D A W N. And then Kello is, sounds like hello, but it's. Kello. But that's not how you spell it. It's K-I-L-L-O-U. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. 
Uh, really, this has been good. And, and I know that people, it's such a big task that a lot of times people just ignore it. But you, you got to be, you got to have your Google site. You got to have your Facebook page. You got to have your Instagram account. Uh, I just realized my Instagram account is in a shambles. So I feel bad saying that. <laughs> I'll have to go check it. But then you have to have your website as well. And they all have to line up and look the same, feel the same, smell the same, so that a client knows I'm dealing with a consistent uh, person, right? It's always the same. I get the same exactly. feel. Especially with contractors. I mean, that's what people are looking for. They don't want someone who's just open today and closed tomorrow. They want someone who'll be with them throughout the whole process. Right, right. It goes back to that trust. And so I, I would automatically... one. It, it wouldn't be automatic, but if I saw somebody who had blog posts for years, great photos, really consistent, reliable provider of their services, I would, I'd have to give more, more weight to that person in a head to head battle against somebody else who came in and said, I've got a great price. Here's, I'll just write it on the back of my business card. Uh, we're talking about a different level of contractor here. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Well, thanks, Don. I appreciate having you here. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>